Hi, welcome to my video on Solve Trig Equations, Quadratic, uh, number four, part four. And this one is pertaining to grouping of terms. Another way to, to factor would be to group terms. And to group terms, we need four terms. Solve by grouping. And to do some of that, let's do some practice with factoring first. So, I see one, two, three three, four terms. So in the first two, I see a sine theta. So I'll take that factor out. So sine theta cos theta gives me cos. And sine divided by sine is 1. So if I take sine out of these two, I get cos plus 1. Now in these two, I see a positive And I see a 2. So take the positive 2 out. 2 cos divided by 2 is cos theta. And 2 divided by 2 is 1. Notice now we have a binomial GCF. So we have cos theta plus 1 is common to the two expressions here and here. So when I take cos theta plus 1 out, I get a sine left in the first one. And in the second one, when I take cos theta plus 1 out, I get a plus 2. So that's the factoring. And again, it's a quadratic because it's two different terms. And notice the degree of this term has a 1 and a 1. Degree is 1. Or sorry, 1 plus 1. Degree is 2. Degree here is 1. Degree here is 1. The degree of 2 is 0. So the degree of this is a 2. That's the degree of this expression. So this is a quadratic. So let's do some practice on these four terms. Let's take the first two. And I see a cos theta. That's common. So factor out the cos theta here, and I get cos theta. So 2 cos squared theta divided by cos theta is cos theta. And a negative 3 cos theta divided by cos theta is a negative 3. And in the next two, I see uh, sine is common in these two. No numbers are common, so let's take whatever this sine is, write that down, and we have to take the sine theta. So when I factor, when I take 2 cos theta sine theta divided by sine theta, I get 2 cos theta. Negative 3 sine theta divided by sine theta is negative 3. Oh, and when I did here, notice 2 uh, cos theta squared divided by cos, I forgot to put the 2 in. If I made that mistake and I didn't notice it, right here I got a 2 cos. And just then, I only had a cos, so I couldn't, this wouldn't have been common. So I knew that if this was a 2 cos, this one had to be 2 cos. And it is, because 2 cos squared theta divided by cos is 2 cos theta. And what's common? 2 cos theta minus 3 is common in this expression. And it's common here. So when we take it out, if we take it at the first expression, we get cos theta left. And when I take 2 cos theta minus root 3 out of this expression, I get a plus sign. So that's uh, some practice. And we practiced this when we did uh, solving or factoring quadratics in the factoring section. The factoring, probably set of factoring number 2. So now, pause the video and see if you can practice these. So here we go, four terms, one, two, three, four terms. First two I see, sine theta is common. So I take sine squared theta divided by sine is sine theta. Sine theta cos theta divided by sine is positive cos. And in here I see a positive, and I see a three as a factor. Take three sine divided by three is sine, sine theta. 3 cos divided by 3 is cos theta. So if this is correct, this factor here should be the same as this one, which it is. So we cos theta plus, sorry, sine theta plus cos theta is in both. So when I take that away, or when I divide this expression into here, I get sine. And when I take sine cos, sine plus cos, and divide it into this expression, 
I get plus 3. And it's factored. Factored by grouping. And let's try number 2. And we have 1, 2, 3, 4 terms. In the first two, I see a 2, and I see cos theta. So take that factor out. 2 cos theta sine divided by 2 cos is sine. And 2 cos divided by 2 cos is a plus 1. Remember, if you've got two terms here, then you have to have 2 in here. And what's common here? I see a negative, so I take the negative. And I look at these two terms, I see root 2. Because this is a negative, because that's a negative right there, this has to be a negative when you take it out by grouping. So negative root 2 sine theta divided by negative root 2 is sine theta. And a negative root 2 divided by negative 2 is a plus 1. So is this factor the same as this one? Yes. So let's remove it because it's common. So if I take that away, I get 2 cos theta. If I take it away from here, I get a minus root 2. So now we practice factoring or factoring or grouping. So let's solve some trig equations that you have to factor by grouping to get the answers. Solve for theta, 0 is less than or equal to theta less than 360. And we have one term, two, three, four terms. So in the first two I see a cos theta. So cos theta sine theta divided by cos theta is sine theta. Negative cos divided by cos is negative 1. And notice that this term, this expression, binomial here is the same as here. So I'm going to take a, what we call a plus 1. 1 is always common. So sine theta divided by 1 is sine theta. Negative 1 divided by 1 is negative sine. And now we have sine theta, sine theta minus 1 is in both expressions. So when we take that out, we get a cos theta. When we take it out of this expression, we get a plus 1. So now we're, we have them factored, but there's two factors, so we let each of the factors equal to 0. Because it's a quadratic. So each of the factors are equal to 0. So that means sine theta is equal to 1. And right here, cos theta is equal to negative 1. And again, that famous circle, unit circle, unit circle, remember the radius of this circle is 1. So x is 0, y is 1. x is negative 1, y is 0. x is 0, y is negative 1. So sine is the y, so where is y 1? y is right here, y is 1 right here. So that means that theta is 90 degrees. And cos is the x, whereas cos x is negative 1 right here. And that means that theta is 180. So the answers for this question are 90 and 180. So if you take either one of these and plug back in here and work it through, you will get a 0. And you can probably in the... In another question, I'll check that out. But again, if you take a 90 and put a 90 here and here and here and right here and work it through, you should get a zero. And if you put 180 in place of theta here, 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 and here and work it through using this or using the calculator, you should get a zero. Okay, let's continue. Solve each for theta. Zero is less than or equal to theta less than 360. Again, we're doing degrees. And we have to notice it's not equal to zero, but it's a quadratic because it's degree two. So I'll move all terms to the left side. Minus six sine theta minus three root two equals zero. So this 6 sine moves over to the left, become a negative. 3 root 2 moves to the left, become a negative. Now we have 1, 2, 3, 4 terms. So in the first term, I see 
uh, six and I see a sign. So I see six sine as a factor in the first two terms here. So 12 sine squared divided by six sine is two sine. And six sine divided by six sine squared theta divided by six sine. Six cancels, sine cancels, so you get a plus root two. And in right here, I have a negative here, so that's automatically a negative. Most common here, and I see a three. So take the three out. So negative six sine divided by negative three is two sine theta. And a negative three root two divided by negative three is a positive root two. So we have, that means we have two sine theta plus two is, notice, two sine theta plus two, root plus root two is here, and is here, so I'm gonna take it out. So if I did take that out, I get three sine theta, and if I take it out of here, I get a negative three. So, we let each of those factors equal to zero. So each of the factors are equal to zero because again, remember this is a quadratic and quadratic has two sets of factors. So we solve each of these factors. So two sine theta equals negative root two divide by two that means sine theta equals negative root two over two. And over here, six sine theta equals three, divide by six. So we have they cancel, so sine theta as a six, three over six is one half. And so let's look at, add sugar to coffee. And I'm going to take do these two here. So sine is negative, sine is positive in one and two. So it's negative in three and four. So let's do this one. This is quadrant three. And let's do this one. Draw a circle. And this one is going to be in quadrant four. So let's work on this one. So sine is negative in quadrant three, so there's the term learn perpendicular to the x-axis. And in quadrant four, term learn perpendicular to the x-axis. And sine is the y, so that's a negative root two over two. And this is a negative root two over two. And automatically, because this is root two over two, this reference angle will be a 45. But to complete the triangle hypotenuse is 1, and this is a root 2 over 2, and it's negative because x is negative on the left side. So both of them are the same, and both of these are the same, the root 2 over 2, but this is x is positive here, and y is negative, and the hypotenuse is 1. So right here, because we're in the third quadrant, it's 180 plus the reference angle. So that means it's going to be 225. And in this one, it's the fourth quadrant, so it's 360. All the way around, and come back 45. So it's a 315 degree. Now, you've got the other one to do. So sine is a half, and sine is positive in one and two. So we'll do quadrant one, perpendicular to the x-axis, and sine is the y and is positive in quadrant two, term learn perpendicular to the x-axis, and it's a half, so y is a half, so y is a half, and y is a half, that means that we have a one, 1, 1 hypotenuse, because you remember the radius of the circle is 1, and this is a root 3 over 2, but is negative with the x, and this is a root 3 over 2, positive, the x is positive here and negative here, 
Opposite of half is a 30. Opposite of half is 30. That means this angle here is a 60. And that's a 60. So remember right here, and I didn't write down the reference angle for these two, is 45. And the reference angle for these two, reference angle here is 30. So in quadrant one, theta is the reference angle, so we have 30 degrees. And in quadrant two, 180 minus the 30, minus the reference, so it's 150. So we have four answers. So theta is, and we put them in order, we got a 30, and we have 150. We have a 225. And we have a 315. So any one of these, there are four answers to this question. And if you take any one of them and plug back into here and mark it out, you will get both sides equal if you wish to check it out. And we have one more to do. And don't forget, pause the video and work this out before I do. See if you understand what, how to work these. Solve for theta, zero is less than or equal to theta, less than 360, again is in degrees. And is already equal to zero. It's a quadratic because I have an x squared, or sorry, cos squared. So we take a cos out of the first two because it's a common factor. So we get two cos squared divided by cos is two cos. Cos divided by cos is plus 1, and I have a negative, and I have a 3, that's a common factor. So negative 6 divided by negative 3 is 2 cos, theta. Negative 3 divided by negative 3 is a positive 1. And you can see that both of these have 2 cos theta plus 1. If you take that away, you get cos theta. Or if you take this expression and divide it by 2 cos plus 1, you get cos. If you take this expression and divide it by 2 cos plus 1, you get a minus 3. So, again, if you take that away from this expression, this, this right here, take that away, you get cos that. If you take this away, 2 cos plus 1 out of here, you get a minus 3. So that means you have 2 cos theta plus 1 equals 0, or cos theta minus 3 equals 0. So we'll continue to solve. Cos theta equals negative 2 cos theta equals negative 1. Divide by 2. Cos theta is negative 1 half. 2's cancel here. And over here, cos theta equals, make that a theta, equals 3. And we have a half. Uh, let's see. We, where are we? Let's check it. Add sugar to coffee. And cos is negative. In, cos is positive in 1 and 4. And is negative in 2 and 3. So we'll draw quadrant 2. We'll draw quadrant three. Work that one out first. So cos is in quadrant two. Term will learn perpendicular to the x-axis. Quadrant three. Term will learn goes out perpendicular to the x-axis. And cos is the x. So this triangle x is a negative a half. And this triangle x is a negative a half. Hypotenuse is one and one. This side right here is root 3 over 2 positive and this side right here is root 3 over 2 that is negative because it's going down y is negative going down positive going up and notice that this ain't this is root 3 over 2 so this angle is 60 here and if you want you can say that's 30 because it's 30 60 90 because that's a root 3 over 2 this angle is 60 that's the reference and this the 30 so the reference angle for these two is 60 degrees. Because we're in the second quadrant, theta is 180 minus the reference. So it's 120 degrees. Because we're in the third quadrant, theta is 180 plus the reference. So that's 240. 
and we have these two answers. Now, what about cos theta equals 3? Well, remember when we looked at the uh, sine graph, we said 1, negative 1, sine of 0 is 0. So the sine graph went like this. Sine graph is a sideways S. So I know it starts here at 0, goes up to 1, comes down to 0, goes down to negative 1, and goes up again. Notice that the sine graph is that the largest maximum value is 1, minimum value is negative 1. So that means cos, oh, sorry, this is the cos graph. What am I trying to do? Cos graph, start cos of 0 is 1, so it goes like this. You have to be careful. This is negative 1, that's a 1, that's a 0. The cos of 0 is 1. And this is the cos graph. So the cos graph or the sine graph, n neither one of them has a value greater than 1 or less than negative 1. They're always in between. Equal to 1, equal to negative 1, and in between. So that means that theta here, there's no solution. And besides that, let's use our calculator just for a second to have a look at this. Turn on the calculator, clear it, and this is sine. So if we write this down as theta is the cos to the negative 1 on the 3. So we go inverse cos of 3, and we have an error on the calculator. An error, why is an error there? Because, let me move this away. Because the cos or sine, the maximum is 1, the minimum is negative 1. You can't have any numbers uh, like 2, 3, 5, 7, or negative 6, negative 8. So that's why this is no solution. So the solution to this problem is 120 degrees and 240 degrees. And I was doing the sine graph here. I had a cos, and I did this, the sideways s. But remember, a cos graph is a sideways C. There's the sideways C starting at 1. And how do I know that? Remember the diagram? We, we discussed this in graphs before, but I'll just look at it again. As you can see, uh, cos is the x. So at 0 degrees, which is here, x is 1. At 90, x is 0. There's the 90. There's the 180 right there, and there's the 270, and there's the 360. So when you go over here, you get a negative 1, which is down right here. When you get the 270, you get a 0, and when you get the 360, you get a 1. So the cos graph is a sideways C. The sine graph is a sideways S. So I apologize for doing the sine graph and not thinking there. But a little mistake is it's okay in this case because I'm explaining more math. So that brings us to the end of this video on uh, solving or grouping when you have four terms. And if you like that, click my like button. If you're not a subscriber, click my subscribe button and visit my math website, www.mathfullyexplained.com to find more information about me, my videos, and the content on my YouTube channel called Math Fully Explained. Thank you for viewing my video. Bye-bye.